Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and colleagues, good day wherever you are. First of all, let me thank Professor Ines Schalt and the Board of the Arabic Association for the Study of Diabetes for inviting me once again to be a member of the faculty of the Annual Congress of the ASD. This year's edition of the Congress is a special one for the well-known reasons which force each of us to accommodate to and respect the measure necessary to fight the pandemic. Given the change situation, I have decided not to deliver a formal lecture to a virtual auditorium, but to have a sort of private conversation with each of you sitting peacefully in your house, in your garden, in your office or any other comfortable place and not to present you figures and graphs as you certainly will see plenty of them during this virtual congress. But I would like to share with you concepts and ideas. The topic of this conversation is referring to the new burning frontiers in diabetes research and care. The first concept to be considered as a preamble is that at present we are living since the beginning of the third millennium in a special condition different from what we were used to face in the past decades, characterized by the fact that in diabetes research and care, as in all the other areas of medicine, are running in parallel evolutionary and revolutionary processes. I would like to describe here which are the areas in evolution and which, on the contrary, represent a revolution, how they can be related, and which are the main issues to be taken into consideration. Of course, in the few minutes of this conversation I cannot enter into many specific details. What I would like to leave to you is a general picture of the present scenario and the main terms for its interpretation. So what do I mean then by evolutionary condition and which are such conditions? By evolutionary condition I intend activities, processes, therapies that were originated and uh, mostly developed in the more or less recent past, mainly in the last century, and that are now being refined and enhanced through research and progressively improved models of care. In this category we can include a number of therapeutic options amongst which we can list uh, the oral and injectable other than insulin hypoglycemic agents that have been first produced and made available in 1950s but that are in continuous evolution in terms of formulation and types. The insulins, as we well know, the first insulin injections was done in 1921. Since then, new formulations have been produced with tremendous improvements in terms of source, immune reactions, length of action. This has produced a dramatic enhancement of the metabolic control and of the quality of life of people with diabetes. We know that much more is in the pipeline of the research labs for further amelioration of the insulin molecules. The systems for the delivery of insulin that have been progressively evolving with uh, new needles, new syringes, pens and then pumps from the very fun rudimental ones in the 70s to the highly sophisticated available now. I will come back to the specific point of pumps later on as they can represent a link between evolution and revolution. Alternative ways of insulin administration such as nasal, oral, rectal have been investigated with little success so far. Possibly some research is still ongoing which seems not to be very promising. Transplantation. In this field the research initiated in the 1970s has not produced yet desired results. The organ transplantation from donors has been practically abandoned, while the research for islet and cell transplantation is still struggling to find viable solutions. 
The models of care have also been evolving, driven by regularly updated guidelines, refinement of the educational processes up to therapeutic education, protocols and devices for clinical monitoring of metabolic control and complications. In a number of settings, all this has been successful with a near normalization of the life of people with diabetes in terms of life exploitation, quality and expectancy, while given the growing number of cases and the insufficiency of resources, a lot is still to be achieved in this regard in many other settings. The way to patient's empowerment has been considered a cornerstone for the transition from a paternalistic medicine to a model more respectful of the needs of, this ri of the rights of the people with diabetes. Awareness campaign, educational initiatives, political statements have produced only relatively small progresses in some setting practically none, despite the efforts mainly of professional and non-professional diabetes associations. Research and implementa implementation activities continue to evolve for a better exploitation of conceptual and cultural model models that found their origin in the last century and are supported by well-established ethical principles, regulatory terms and consolidated structure. However, since the beginning of the third millennium, new protagonists whose nature and potential was still vague and expected to be operative in a far future became suddenly real and powerfully entered into the daily life worldwide, worldwide changing the cultural paradigms in any field of the society including healthcare, requiring a profound change in the existing operational models. And this is also very true for diabetes care. The main protagonists for such a revolutionary change are the wide diffusion of the internet and the development of the artificial intelligence that have triggered a number of previously unthinkable opportunities but that have, but that have also generated relevant uncertainties related to the potential risk calling for a profound change in cultural, ethica, ethical and regulatory patterns. The Internet can penetrate any place in the world and could allow filling the gaps that characterize the present condition of remarkable inequalities in the delivery of healthcare between different settings within and between countries while artificial intelligence allows for a tremendous enhancement of the capacity and the rapidity to elaborate a massive amount of information and to propose solutions. The combination of internet and, and artificial intelligence are characterizing a new era and we have now to cope with such a revolutionary event that changed the paradigm we were used to live with. The more we are aware of this, the better we can govern the complex condition that sees running in parallel and frequently in competition the old and new models of care. In other words, we have to manage the transition having in mind what is worth to be maintained of the past and which are the opportunities but also the critical points that might characterize the future delivery of diabetes care. Such a change requires a relevant effort also considering that the cultural background of the present ge generation of decision makers has its roots into the models of the past and a great effort is required to adjust to, adjust to the new cultural environment that, on the other hand, is natural for the younger generation who, however, do not have yet the full decision power and might not have sufficient experience and knowledge of the positive and negative aspect of the past. Telemedicine, big data collection and social media represent some of the areas where the internet can be of help for diabetes care. In practice, the new era 
will bring great opportunities for better information and education, reaching the people with diabetes wherever they are and increasing their knowledge and awareness about the disease. This will pave the way to empowerment as the result of diffused bottom-up process taking advantage of the social media. However, it is more and more evident that the information and advice is available through the internet might not all be innocent and their messages for more or less transparent and safe objectives having as a target the more unexperienced and fragile individuals. This call for a relevant change in the basic concept of diabetes education, the need to provide assistance to the patient on how to navigate amongst the massive offers from the net and how to select and take advantage of the safe and helpful ones. A new era of education is at its dawn and the new generation of educators and of educators of educators need to grow, realizing the not easy task to harmonize, harmonize old and new concepts and methods. The great potential of the Internet can represent a powerful instrument to reduce the inequalities and the cost of diabetes care through a wide adoption of telemedicine, especially in areas remote and difficult to be reached and deprived. However, a great caution needs to be adopted in the implementation of telemedicine in order to avoid to dehumanize the delivery of diabetes care through excessive standardization that might not satisfy the needs of the individual person with diabetes. Furthermore, it has been made evident during the present pandemic for a number of reasons the possibility to access the net is not universal and careful attention is to be paid to avoid increased discrimination of those who are not connected. A further element of interest offered by the net is the possibility to collect massive amounts of information from different sources, not only medical and administrative records, but also personal data during the daily life through the connection to more and more sophisticated apps downloaded in cellular forms. They can be extremely helpful, monitoring and providing advice as an example on nutrition, advising what should be eaten and registering details on what has been consumed, on physical activity, providing information on exercise done, calories spent, pulse rate and even dynamic ECG and oxygen saturation and much more. Such live information can help tailoring the therapy according to physical exercise plan or done according to blood glucose levels, just to mention a few. Parameters obtained from clinical and administrative services and from such apps represent a conscious or unconscious source of personal information for big databases that can represent the platform to provide advice and care more and more tailored to the characteristics and the needs of any individual person with diabetes. However, major concerns are related to the privacy of individuals that will progressively vanish, to the property and to the exploitation of such data that might, and the experience already confirms, be used not necessarily in favor of the individuals, but for more or less transparent and correct purposes. Furthermore, you know that the security of the big data bank with sensitive information cannot be assured and ACA's intrusion is part of the daily chronicles. Artificial intelligence, as optimistically stated by the medical futurist, is on course to boost the real era of the art of medicine by automating administrative tasks and aiding in decision-making, smart algorithms promise to free up physician valuable time, time that can be dedicated where the human touch is essential in healthcare. It is fundamental however to underline that artificial intelligence should not be meant to substitute 
the human relationship that in the delivery of healthcare in general and in diabetes care in particular are absolutely indispensable. However, the temptation to deliver healthcare through artificial intelligence based devices characterized by independent clinical capacity is quite strong, based mostly on economic grounds and on the improper search for extreme, dreadful standardization. A futuristic field of application of artificial intelligence and advanced technology is represented by robotics. The most interesting area of robotics in diabetes care is related to the organ substitution. Implantable limbs responding to neurological stimuli are already available, helping to solve the disability following amputation. The systems for continuous insulin delivery based on continuous glucose monitoring have already changed the life of a relevant number of people with type 1 diabetes and are close to become highly reliable, reliable and fully independent. This example of integration of the human bodies with high technological and intelligent artificial organ indicates that the futuristic era of the cyborg is already here. However, a relevant topic of attention regarding the implementation of artificial intelligence in medicine and in our, in our case in diabetes care is represented by the responsibility to be assigned in case of unwanted negative outcome of a procedure assisted by artificial intelligence. As we know, standardization is applicable to any medical intervention up to a certain level, after which choices between different plausible options are to be made according to a number of factors that might differ in different subjects and in different settings. This is the specific role of a healthcare professional and the suitability of the choice will only be confirmed by the positive or negative outcome. Can artificial intelligence be liable for its intervention in case on negative outcome? <coughs> the scenario that I have described <coughs> is definitely new and requires a cultural jump as the previous parameters are referenced in terms of uh, regulatory issue, educator, educational models and delivery of diabetes care need to be adjusted to the new opportunities and relative risk. Should the integration between the, the evolutionary processes and the revolutionary ones be successfully accomplished, there is the strong hope that precision and personalized medicine and overall equity will become a reality to the benefit of people with diabetes. It is our responsibility to govern such a transition and to make it possible. Thank you for your attention.